thanks Kiran um, for introducing everyone. So my name is Jackie from BRS MG. So we are also 100% fully Malaysian known EPCC based in Malaysia. Um, current headcount with over 200 employees across Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Vietnam mixes um, ASEAN EPCC. So some of our experiences are in the rooftops plus ground mount also for the past 10 years. Um, so we are also recently recipient of the Frost and Sullivan Malaysia Solar Power Company of the Year. So this is something that we want to emphasize that because this is a prestigious um, award for us as an organization. Okay. For me personally, my experiences will be on the rooftop solar. So we have heard earlier that Seda has mentioned about NEM scheme. So basically the NEM scheme actually uh, going to help improve the adaption of solar in Malaysia. So we actually do hope that this policy continuously gets supported by Seda. And actually I have some data on my meeting points where from 2019 and 2020, we see a very big spike of adaption of NEM system in rooftop solar. So we are talking about 21.7 megawatt of adaption from 2018 to 31 megawatt at 2019. Okay, so that's about 14% also of uh, adaption. And then from 2019, due to the enhancement from the policies, we see that 59% increment of adaption of NEM quota. So we are talking about from 31 megawatt all the way to 183 megawatt till date. So Seda also mentioned that we still have a balance of quota for NEM scheme in terms of rooftop solar in relevant, um, about 250 megawatt or so. So we actually do see the, the, the good prospect on this. Yeah. Yes, it will be sustainable in terms of the solar roadmap in Malaysia. Um, personally, I think it's very, very positive for Malaysia market due to the due diligence has been done and the maturity of the market, you know. So so we, we do pros, we do see the real prospect coming, you know, positivity of it. Same thoughts here. Um, with the with the drive even with the policy is um, a little bit unstable, but we still see the things are moving. So it will be a very, very positive state for things for, for coming coming months, you know, for the coming quarters, for the remaining quarters. We have the NEM coming to an end. We have the LSS4 bidding coming to submission in, in very, very close deadline too. So with that, I guess, yeah, let's see how it goes, you know, like Jay said. You know. This, this actually carbon credit is not being actually looked into, like Mr. Gan mentioned. But I am aware that with the current technology advancement, you can actually utilize carbon credits with some uh, cryptocurrency and, and in exchange for, for for certain services, for example. So I'm sure I'm sure with that advancement in technology, it will slowly improve the awareness of carbon credits. Yeah. Basically, limitations are there, are always there. Um, the regulations are always set, and it's very clear that there are certain studies that you need to do before you can obtain the approval. Um, say, for example, if you want to do NEM, above 72 kilowatt, like Henrik mentioned, you need to conduct a NEMA study. So that is in relevant of the grid, ensuring the, the feasibility of the proposed system, right? So it is more steps ahead compared to a smaller system, but it is still a doable system. It's still, the regulation are there already implemented yeah. to make sure that there is no issues for us to um, work on the projects, a larger scale project. So on, on the different different um, schemes available, like you have mentioned, right, Neda, there is the P2P pilot project going on, 
um, there is leasing, there is PPA, prior PPA, there might be even DPPA that they mentioned that might be coming, right? So I believe these kind of policies will cater to different, different kind of clients. You have client structure from the corporate level, which is um, they would not want to spend their capex on something which is not relevant too much on their production, for example, right? On expanding their manufacturing. And there is the smaller SME that are willing to have the capex because they will have some tax benefit incentive, you know, and things like that. So it always have a different policy catering to every uh, industry player. Yeah, and consumers also. So thank you, EQ, and thank you, Kieran, to be the moderator also for our session. Um, in our point, we do hope the, the government and the policy will be even more firm up and uh, everyone has a clear direction to move together to achieve a better renewable energy uh, goal for Malaysia. So uh, policies and regulations are definitely one of the major points that we hope that we see the containment. Yeah.